Eh, this is the iPhone 12 mini. Uh. Very small, eh? After one year, I still think this phone very small. Nice, ah. Uh. Can fit in my pocket very well. I still like my 12 Pro. Not too big, not too small. Just nice. Ayo, if I want a Pro, uh, I'm going to buy the Pro Max. Since you're going Pro already, go big or go home, man. Last time, buying an iPhone was very easy. You just go to the shop and you buy an iPhone. Then, you could choose between the big iPhone and the small iPhone. Nowadays, there are four f***ing iPhones to choose from! The iPhone and the Pro Max, they make sense. It's the big one and the small one. But why is there also a Mini and a Pro? Are they worth your time? Let's find out. Ray and I have been using the iPhone 12 mini and iPhone 12 Pro as our daily drivers for the past year. And in that time span, we've learned quite a lot about these phones and who exactly they're for. So if you've been eyeing these devices and would like to know what it was like to own one long term, then this is for you. Since this is not a typical review, we will be breaking it down into four different categories. And we'll start with... Okay, so the performance on the iPhone 12 Pro is great. The phone is not laggy and everything is smooth as butter, which is something that you expect on a phone this caliber. Battery life is also good. When I started using this phone, it could last me for a day and a half with about 8 hours of screen on time. My usage typically revolves around social media and web browsing with a little bit of camera usage too. So I wouldn't say that I'm a super heavy user. And even after one whole year, it will still comfortably last me a whole day with about 6 hours of screen on time. I think the only part that is not up to flagship expectations is the charging. The iPhone 12 Pro only supports 20 watt fast charging which is quite slow in 2021. Even then, you'll have to buy the 99 ringgit brick separately. But since the 12 Pro's battery life is so good, I never really found the need for fast charging. I was okay just charging it slowly when I was in the office. But one of my biggest complaints is the fact that the phone doesn't come with a fingerprint scanner. Since we are technically living with COVID now, Face ID doesn't make sense since we are all wearing a face mask. The power button is huge and I think Apple can definitely fit a fingerprint scanner there. After all, they did it with the iPad mini. Then buy the Apple Watch lah! Oh la stupid man, I'm not gonna spend money just to unlock my phone, right? Uh, true also la. <laughs> okay la, on my iPhone 12 mini, performance also damn on one actually. Even though, you know, it doesn't have the pro name, right? Performance is still very pro and everything runs like... <sighs> but I have a very different experience when it comes to battery life. Uh, from the get-go, seeing the tiny battery was a bit of a concern already lah because I'm so used to using phones with 4,000 plus milliamp hours, you know? That said, in the beginning, I could get a full 15-hour day out of the iPhone 12 mini with almost like about 6 hours of screen on time. Those are good numbers by anyone's standards, so I was very impressed. Over time though, this changed. Uh, I noticed the battery life dropped gradually and after a year, I find myself needing to charge my phone like twice a day, you know, only managing about 3 hours of screen on time instead. Huh? Only 3 hours ah? So what's your battery health now? Um, so check mine. 82%? Yours eh? Oh, mine is right. 92%. I, I guess I didn't charge overnight lah, so that's why I can tahan. Oh, yeah. True also. I, I mean, I charge my phone every night because like it can only last one day and I like to wake up with 100% battery. That's why I use small phone for what? Big phone's better because big phones got better. Camera. Every year, the iPhone's camera confirm banging one and the iPhone 12 Pro is no different. Everything is steady from PP. The iPhone 12 Pro features a 12 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera and also a 12 megapixel telephoto camera. But don't look down on the 12 megapixels because the photos taken on the iPhone 12 Pro are as good as any flagship out today. And I think one of the underrated features is how smooth switching between the cameras are. You know a lot of the Android smartphones got a bit of delay, you know, a bit kick ha, kick ha. But the iPhone one, ah, wah, gear. Yeah, true also. I also like that they, you know, they give you a little bit of a preview of like what each lens will look like even before you switch them in the camera app. Somehow it's super easy to use. Just point and shoot. No need to think so hard. Or just set things la, this la, that la. I no need one. If you want to do that, use camera instead. See? Ultra wide. 
good. White, good. Doom, also good. Everything, good. Go use your telephoto lens a lot, man. No. Then might as well use this one. As far as image quality in the main and ultra wide camera goes, both the Mini and the Pro are very similar. Colors look very natural and there are plenty of details. Since it isn't super processed, it's also very easy to edit and tweak to your liking in post. I also like how well the ultra wide camera can match the image of the wide camera. You don't really see a drop in quality, which is very common to see on other smartphones, even on expensive flagships. The night mode is also solid because I think it has a really good balance when it comes to exposure and also color accuracy in super low light. You can also choose how long you want each night mode shot to be exposed for, which is always handy. At least I want to use telephoto camera. I can eh. You can meh? Yes, the iPhone's telephoto can't zoom as far as like a Samsung or like a Huawei, but it is still better than nothing. Uh. You can also use this to take more flattering portrait photos. Please lah, if I want better camera, I'll get the Pro Max, okay? That one got sensor shift, you know. Plus, if I use small phone, I can take advantage of the Having a small form factor smartphone is super rare these days, especially one with no compromises like the iPhone 12 mini. It will fit in pretty much every pocket you have and it doesn't stick out or like, you know, poke you in the hip if you keep it in the front of your jeans. The size also makes it very easy to hold and use. You know, I can reach all the corners of my smartphone without needing to engage the one-handed mode, which makes navigating it really easy. It also hurts way less when I drop it on my face. Yet, Apple has managed to maintain an excellent build and finish with their device. I like the squared off industrial design of the iPhone 12 series over the rounded iPhone 11s, but I guess that's more of a personal preference thing. What isn't personal preference is how durable the phone has been in my year with it. I use this phone without a case or screen protector and I abuse it a lot. Despite that, the phone still looks pretty good. Of course, there are hairline scratches here and there, and there are one or two deeper grooves, but nothing that I think would bother any user. The frame also has a couple of chips in it, but considering how often it has flown out of my hands and onto the floor, I think this is pretty good lah. But I wish it had a stainless steel band. Like, oh, I just love the way that glossy, heavy material feels in the hand and it just goes such a long way in giving it that premium heft. Yeah, the iPhone 12 Pro has a stainless steel band, but I don't know how to appreciate it. Lah. It's so smudgy, so I have to constantly wipe my phone. But I agree that it's quite durable. I use it with a case and a screen protector, and so far, it's like almost flawless. The only place with a lot of scratches is around the charging port because when I try to plug in the phone, I will accidentally scratch it. But I really like the size because I can take advantage of the... <laughs> speakers. So the iPhone 12 Pro here comes with a 6.1 inch display which is like just the perfect size for me. It's not like so small like the iPhone 12 mini and it's not like too big just like the iPhone 12 Pro Max. What, what do you mean it's not too big? Like look at it, it's huge! Look at that, I can't even reach the top corner with my finger when using one hand. What do you mean it's too God, big? God, give you two hands, you use two hands to use... Oh no, ayo. Ah yeah, but enough Leo. let me get back to my point. The iPhone 12 Pro's display is great. The colours looks very accurate and very vibrant, plus the OLED screen means you get really good contrast and also excellent viewing angles. Okay, sure, my screen is a little bit smaller. A lot smaller, please. But it's right up there in terms of quality with the iPhone 12 Pro. I think the only thing that I don't really like about the screen is that it's not quite bright enough so it can get a little hard to see under direct sunlight. I also would have liked a faster refresh rate because 60Hz just feels so 2008. I, I don't care about fast refresh rate. Right now. What I care is nice speakers and the iPhone 12 Pro has really nice speakers. They get really loud, they sound very balanced left to right and give a surprisingly full sound despite being tiny phone speakers. It's a bit lacking in the bass, but overall, good. Uh, yeah, iPhone 12 mini also good, good speakers. Word. You listen to this. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About. This is me, Amin. And it's Alex. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about anti-vaxxers. Uh, it's a hot topic, um, especially now. I mean, they've been around in the periphery. 
uh, way before when the pandemic happened. Um, it has been a movement where people believe that you know vaccines are dangerous or they have like a different lifestyle. Okay lah. Overall, both smartphones have good speakers and good screens. What's really different is the. The iPhone 12 mini now retails for 2,899 ringgit, while the iPhone 12 Pro is still retailing for 4,399 ringgit. And the worst part is you can't even buy the iPhone 12 Pro on Apple's official website because now they want you to buy the 13 Pro. Yalo. But would I recommend that you go out and buy the iPhone 12 mini? <sighs> No, because after spending one whole year with the iPhone 12 mini, the phone that I would recommend people go out and buy is the regular iPhone 12, or in 13 I guess. The main reason is that I don't have confidence in the battery life, and that's something a regular iPhone is really strong in. So unless you really want a tiny smartphone, the mini is just not quite there yet that I can recommend it to everyone. It's definitely a niche product. What about you? Would you recommend the 12 Pro? No, I would still recommend the iPhone 12 because you are not actually missing out a lot of things besides the telephoto camera. The regular iPhone is more affordable, has a matte frame that doesn't get too smudgy and is also the same size as the 12 Pro which is the perfect size for me. If you really want the Pro phone experience then go out lah and get the Pro Max. Otherwise, I would recommend the normal iPhone. Alright, so that's it. That's our like one year review of the iPhone 12 mini and iPhone 12 Pro. Two interesting but still I would say very niche additions to the iPhone lineup. Obviously this year there are more iPhones. You got the iPhone 13 mini and the iPhone 13 Pro. And you know, so Ray and I are going to switch and upgrade to the 13 series and find out if you know they make any difference or if they upgraded the things that we were talking about just now i personally am excited to see if the battery life is better because that's like the main concern yep. if they fix that right i think everything else we can give the normal iphone a run for its money what about you uh i want to see if the refresh rate makes a difference because ah. i don't really care about refresh rates ah, ah, ah. to be honest so I'm quite excited to see that like, if that will make a difference and I if I believe, like it. I can't believe you don't care about refresh rate. Like 120 hertz is so like butter or in your case, ghee. <laughs> it's so <laughs> smooth. Like how can you not? <sighs> okay, never mind, never mind. <sighs> I'm also pretty excited to see the new cinematic mode. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the new, new cinema. Yep. Oh yeah, the 30 mini also has uh, sensor shift now, right? Yep. Yeah, so I'm gonna see if it actually makes a difference. I wish there was a telephoto camera though. I really like telephoto portraits. Oh, got the macro, the pro one. Oh, yellow. 30 mini one also don't have. Yellow. Yeah. Maybe next time, la. 14 mini. Yeah, probably. <laughs> if la. they still have the mini by oh, then. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. So, okay, la. so we're gonna upgrade uh, and then we're gonna come back with like a part two uh, review. Um, we might do it together again or we might do separate ones depending on if you guys like this kind of format. So let us know in the comment section below. Alright, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up, like us on Facebook, uh, follow us on TikTok, and also like us on Instagram and everywhere on social media. Lah. You can and subscribe to our YouTube channel, so don't forget Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's it from us, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.